Hey everyone. Excitation is how the nervous system stimulates an action potential in the myofibers sarcolemma. But in order for the skeletal muscle to contract, that stimulation must lead to a shortening of sarcomeres achieved by moving the myofilaments. The series of events that connects excitation to sliding filaments is called excitation contraction coupling. It's phase two of skeletal muscle fiber contraction. When an action potential reaches a transverse tubule or a T-tubule, it follows the T-tubule's path running adjacent to a terminal cistern of the sarcoplasm, all the while continuing to stimulate the opening of voltage-gated ion channels, propagating this muscle action potential all along the sarcolemma. In the T-tubule, the action potentials stimulate the voltage-sensitive dihydropyridine receptors, or DHP receptors. These receptors are physically linked to the ryanodine receptors, or RYR1 receptors, of the calcium ion channels in the membrane of the terminal cistern of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. When the DHP receptors are stimulated, they undergo a conformational change, which means they change shape. That change triggers the RYR1 receptors and causes the opening of the calcium ion channels in the terminal cistern of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Since calcium ions are higher in concentration in the sarcoplasmic reticulum than they are in the sarcoplasm, they diffuse down their concentration gradient into the cytosol of the sarcoplasm. The calcium ions in the cytosol can now bind to the troponin of the sarcomere's thin filaments. This binding causes the troponin-tropomyosin complex to undergo its own conformational change exposing the myosin binding sites on the G-actin of the thin filaments. These sites are now available for binding to myosin heads. There you have it. We've linked the excitation to the filaments. Next, we'll look at how the sarcomere shortens. Good luck, and I'll see you next time.